Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is Triangle, The Secret Storm, Season 1, Episode 4, and the name of this episode is Go With The Flow. Now, before I get into this review, let me um, extend my, my love and condolences to everyone that's affected by Hurricane Harvey, as well as Hurricane Irma. Um, let me give a special shout out to my best friend, um, Kenneth Toots, of the K2 Spot. Um, you know, I, I've i been keeping in touch with him, but, you know, he's, right now, he's, you know, definitely been affected by the hurricane, and right now his power is out, but um, I'm definitely going to have his link in the description box. Definitely check out his um, his videos. I mean, he does great music reviews, and he definitely reviews up-and-coming artists, you know, of different genres of music, so... Definitely send them your love and send them your support if you can. And definitely, if you can give relief to everyone that's that, that has been affected by Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma, please do so. Now, also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to BRTBTV.com because this show is awesome, as well as many other shows that BRTBTV um, has created and produced. So yes, subscribe to BRTV TV. Subscribe. <laughs> I, I trip on my words, y'all. Forgive me, y'all. But again, subscribe. Subscribe to BRTBTV.com. And if you haven't if you haven't done so, you need to do it right now because there's a lot, <laughs> you know, for you for there's a lot there for you guys to to take a part of because. You know, BRTBTV.com is doing great work, and you know, <laughs> you need to get on. You need to get on the bandwagon if you haven't already jumped. So, you know, jump on now. Don't jump on later. Jump on right now. All right. And also, um, check out the Triangle Fan Club on Facebook. You get everything. You get everything BRTBTV. You get you know interactions with the cast and crew, as well as you get updates from the um, from the creator, um, Caesar Williams. So definitely, definitely check, definitely subscribe to BRTBTV.com, and check out Triangle Fan Club on Facebook. Boom. Now let me get into this episode, y'all, because this episode blew my mind. Um, the episode opens up with um, Gary, you know, having another visit with Dr. Chase. Now, he kind of lets Dr. Chase know that since his last visit, he's been trying to go with the flow of things. Maybe a lot of this tension that he's dealing with is due to the fact that he just moved and he's trying to readjust to his, to his um, new surroundings and his new job, his new living situation with Logan. But then... This fool starts getting deeper and deeper, and we're starting to see how he really thinks of Logan and what he really thinks of their relationship and how he sees himself in relation to Logan. And it was like, yo, Logan has no idea the kind of man that he's with. But then, yeah, because so, cause pretty much in this, in this session with Dr. Chase, he lets he lets her know that Logan is out of town in Philly visiting his mom and that he didn't have his father in his life, you know, and you know, what I what I try to do in our relationship is give him structure, you know, right now I'm supporting him while he's writing this book, book of poetry. And the way he said it was just very condescending, like, you know, yeah, I'm I'm supporting him while he writes his little book of poetry. Not realizing that that you know that at the end of the day, you know Logan is very talented and his poetry is amazing, but he he doesn't see it as being on the same level as him. And he was saying that, but then he was saying that you know I'm just you know trying to get Logan you know to not waste money, but. Now that, um, but then, you know, Dr. Chase asked, well, okay, then don't you think it would probably help if Logan got a job? And he was like, he had a job when we lived in Philly, you know, and he would always be out shopping with his best friend, Naya. And, you know, so, but the thing is, you know, now that my dollar is the only one that matters, he now is learning structure and responsibility and learning how to manage, how to make money stretch because, 
um, now that my dollar's the only one that's actually coming into the household, and I, I'm just thinking like, yo, you are literally trying to rip any type of independence that Logan may have so that he will have to solely financially, morally, and psychologically depend on you for his whole well-being. And I'm just sitting here thinking, this fool is, uh, is one narcissistic asshole. Like, you're in a relationship, but it's all about you. And Logan is completely naive, and it's unbeknownst to him that this is the type of man Gary is. Now, um, and he's saying that he's happy that Logan has to rely on him, you know, and that, um, and then he's like, he's happy that his money is the only one that's coming to the table. So, as far as, as far as anything else, it doesn't matter. Then he also reveals that years ago he was he was prescribed Sanex, you know, for his for his for his um for his psychological condition. But he doesn't like taking on he doesn't like taking pills. He doesn't want he doesn't want to rely on medication. So that lets you know this is a ticking time bomb waiting to happen because you've already been diagnosed with a condition that requires medication and you refuse it. You're pretty much like a person that can just tick. And things can go completely straight to hell in the matter of a in the matter of a snap of a finger, and we're kind of seeing we're kind of seeing that situation with you know with Neil and um, Triangle, so that was interesting. But then um, he pretty much said that he had, he also talks about where he first met Logan. They were both in college. You know, he was there I think getting his masters and. Um, Logan was in his junior year and he was pretty much in this, you know, relationship with this asshole that just ended, you know, because you remember um, we saw in the last episode, Logan talked about this guy that he used to date, that they were like childhood sweethearts, but the guy was like a free spirit, so that, you know, that made them butt heads because they weren't equally yoked, so then he starts saying that, you know, well, you know, uh, you know, the thing is with me and Logan is that Logan is a dreamer, I'm a realist. You know, he's, and that Logan's very passionate and is very, you know, flight forward. Well, I use common sense and I use, you know, um, and I use, you know, management, you know, and, and like, just from hearing all of this, you know, Dr. Chase is like, do you even see him as an equal? He's like, well, yeah, I do. And it just goes to show you that, dude, you, you're saying you see him as an equal, but it's clearly obvious you see that he, you feel that Logan is beneath you and that he's not on the same level as you. And you're completely gratified that he does have to depend on you. And he was like saying that, you know, I, I have these bad episodes and I'm trying my best to not have another one because I may not come back from it. So she pretty much suggests that he comes back for another session. He immediately rejects that and was like, um, well, you could just analyze me right now. She's like, well, I'm still getting to know you. I at least want to get like at least five or six sessions with you. So once you come back for another session, he's like, well, um, uh, you should know what to do in your second session. And since I'm paying you, you need to you need to at least know what my issue is, and if you don't, then I don't think I should be wasting my time giving you my money and all of this. And I'm like, yo, this is the person who's helping you, and now you're trying to tell her how to do her job? Really, Negro? So then he left, and she puts in her notes, you know, because you know that's what psychiatrists do. They pretty much record, you know, every you know session that they have, and they give their analysis. She gave her analysis of that meeting, and she pretty much said that this fool is a sociopath, and he is a walking time bomb, and anyone that's affiliated with him is in danger. So, we definitely got that going on. Then, we go to Sebastian and Ty, a.k.a. Magic Stick, because you know if he hit once, he can hit twice. Uh, all right, now I got that out of my system. Uh, we see that, you know, Sebastian and Ty, you know, are talking after they had the blowout from the last episode. 
and he was saying, and Ty was like, look, you know, I don't like fighting with you, you know, because the main reason why I I was attracted to you because you were so easygoing, because you were so relaxed, and you knew how to go with the flow. So I'm like, this whole go with the flow thing, already put it out there that both Gary and Ty are similar in some ways. So there's some commonality there. But then... You know, he was saying that, you know, I hate arguing, and Sebastian's like, I don't want to argue with you either, baby. I just, I just have so much love for you, and it just sometimes, it sometimes just takes over me, and I go left. But he says that, look, you know, how about, you know, dinner and a movie? And he's like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. And he's like, okay, well, you know, um, I'm going to call my sister and have a meet her. And Charles like, what? What the hell are you talking about? He's like, you know, why, like, you know, he said that, look, my sister's going to meet us for dinner. He's like, yo, why are you bringing your sister? Like, look, I'm in a relationship with you. I ain't got to be in a relationship with your whole family. And besides, your sister don't even like me. And he was like, yeah, but at the end of the day, that $2,000 that you got burning up your pocket, that was her money, and it was a loan. And it's like, look, I just want to check up on her because she's been through a lot, and I haven't been there for her, so I really want to spend some time with her. So... You know, I invited her to dinner with us. He's like, okay. And then Ty was like, look, she can come to dinner with us, but she can't go to the movies with us unless she want to watch you give me head during the movie. And he's like, and we could probably see a movie, one of those romantic movies you like. So we already see that Sebastian is a romantic. But yet, we know Ty is definitely not that kind of guy. You know, and... He was like, okay, fine. So they, they pretty much end up saying that, okay, you know, and then, like, Sebastian's like, okay, well, if you good, you know, you'll get more than just head at the movies. And he's like, okay, well, let me get something right now. And they all, and they go back into, into you know, getting it hot and steamy. They didn't, so we already know that Ty and Sebastian, Ty and Sebastian has amazing sexual chemistry. Their sexual chemistry is, is off the charts, you know, through the roof. <laughs> So we see that going down. So then we actually see, uh, you know, Ty, Sebastian, and Sh Ty, Sebastian, and Sharon go to dinner. And already, Sharon is already seeing Ty that, yo, mm-mm. Because -mm. it's like Sharon can see those tendencies because she has lived it. And for those who have been following, you know, doc, you know, Sharon, a.k.a. Dr. Chase, in season three of Triangle, you know the kind of mess she went through with Alex as well as Dr. Lorenzo. So we definitely know Sharon is seeing Ty as being that same kind of person. You know, a person that's going to take advantage of the naive and the, you know, the weak, so to speak. So immediately when, they, when she sits down, she already is like kind of giving him that look like, mm-mm. She's -mm. like, so how are you, Ty? And he's like, mm-hmm. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> it was so funny because, like, Ty is kind of, like, giving, like, I, he, like, he gives no fucks about Sharon whatsoever. So they pretty much go back and forth at this dinner, and, you know, she's saying that, yeah, um, I've been, you know, I've been missing my brother. I haven't seen him for a while. Hopefully you're not keeping him from me. And he's like, and he's like, oh, no. And then, like, Ty's like, well, we've just been cooling, doing us, you know, doing what we do. What we have is, we have a situation that is what it is. But he's like, and then Sebastian's like, no, Ty has not been keeping me from you. I've just been pretty occupied, and, you know, I promise that I'm going to spend more time with you. That's why I invited you to dinner. So she's like, okay. And she's like, well, and and she's like, so do you, look, so, so pretty much she kind of asked Ty, so you care about Sebastian? And he's like, of course I do. He's like, well, action speaks louder than words. So we already seen there's tension there. And they have dinner, and then Sebastian, they have Thai food, too. So Sebastian goes to the bathroom. While they're in the bathroom, they both go back and forth, like uh, um, Ty and Sharon. And Sharon is pretty much like, you know, um, so, and I think that's when she asked the question to Ty, like, do you love my, do you love, do you care about Sebastian? He's like, of course I care about Sebastian. She's like, well, you know, actions speak louder than words, you know. And she's like, and, and like, because at first, you know, when she was kind of implicating this beforehand, you know, Ty's kind of looking at Sebastian like, what the hell have you been telling your sister? You know, but 
And she's like, look, I'm not going, but he hasn't told me anything. You know, I, I call her like I see it. So while they're having this discussion, while Sebastian's gone, he's like, she's pretty much saying that, look, you know, my brother really cares about you, and you really need to, you really need to, like, you know, show that you feel the same way about him. And you need to kind of, like, you know, you know, as, again, actions speak louder than words. And Ty just immediately starts flipping on him. was like, look, won't you judge your mama and stop trying to analyze me? And she's like, excuse me? Why you got to be so hostile? And he's like, why is it that every time a black man assess himself as hostile or as angry? He's like, please don't tell me that you're a racist along with being a bitch. And she was like, oh, you neurotic asshole. I know about men like you. Men who think just because you got a big dick and you got trauma, that's going to get you through life. And he's like, oh. How you know I got a big dick? You want to see it? But never mind. I only mess with dudes. I don't mess with simple bitches like you. And I'm done being fake with your ass and just up and left. And I was like, yo, Ty is an asshole. <laughs> but he's a realist, though. He's honest, but he's an asshole. Because he just straight shut her down and just left. And then Sebastian came out like, oh, my God, where's Ty? And she's like, he left. He's like, what did you do? He's like, this dude was, com was completely rude to me. What the fuck do you mean? What did I do? So he goes out there. We see Sebastian and Ty, you know, Sebastian trying to get Ty to come back in. And while that's going on, we see Gary walks up and he sees the both of them, you know, in front of the restaurant. And they don't see Gary, but Gary sees them. And... And I'm like, so now he knows that Ty and Sebastian are together. And we know from the last episode that Sebastian is one of, um, is one of Gary's students. And we know that he had the threesome with Ty. So, hence the connection. So, immediately, that little, that little conniving little motherfucker, Gary, already will start turning. So, pretty much, you know... Uh, Sebastian's trying to get Ty to go back to the restaurant. He's like, no, man, fuck her and fuck this. Look, I'm good with you. It don't mean I'm going to be good with your family. And he's like, come on, baby, come on. He's like, look, leave me the fuck alone. And then he walked off, and I'm like, bruh, you ain't have to talk to Sebastian like that, man. Sebastian really does love Ty. But at the end of the day, it's not an equally yoked relationship. You know, Ty has his way, and Ty is not going to frame from that way whatsoever so immediately Sebastian goes in it's like you know what did you say to him what did you like why are you why you, why why did you have to attack him all the time every time he comes around and Sean was like look I didn't attack him I was just having a conversation and he blew up at me and he blew up at me because I wasn't for this I wasn't for the bullshit and we definitely know that to be true. And then, like, you know, Sebastian's like, well, Sharon, you don't have to do this. You know, I came here for, for you. I, I came here, you know, for us to spend time as a family, not for you to psychoanalyze my relationship. And this is why I have to check you, Sebastian. She, psycho, she was psychoanalyzing Gary. What she was doing with you was telling you the truth. And, you know, Sebastian's like, well, I, you can't expect me, to, like, just because you had a bad situation, you can't expect that that's what I'm going through. And she's like, look, you're going through something worse than I did. And the thing is, I learned from my mistakes, and it's pain, it, it pains my heart to see you going through this. Like, I know the kind of person you are. You would feed, you know, you would feed animals, and you would help the homeless. You have a big heart. But having a big heart can be damaging you when you when you give your heart to the wrong person. I know you care about him. I know you love him. But he doesn't feel the same way. And if you keep this up, he is going to drag you down. And he was like, well, I'll just guess I'll see you later. He ends up running off. And, yo, shout out to Callie Gilman. She is a phenomenal actress. I mean, in the scene with Gary and in this scene with Sebastian, you really see the layers of Sharon. And it's like, it makes me like Sharon even more because we see that she has good intentions and that she's not trying to sabotage his relationship, but she's trying to get him to wake up and smell the coffee. You're in a relationship with a man who doesn't want the same thing as you. So after that, after, you know, so pretty much that scene ended, then we see... Gary, with his sneaky ass, 
goes to one of the bars where Ty happens to be there having drinks. And immediately he starts in and he's and immediately he's like and he's he pretty much approaches Ty and Ty's like, Look, you know, save all your bullshit, you know, if you come in here with some with some crap, you just need to go on somewhere and then Gary is like, What? And then Ty stood up and was like, We got a problem? And I was like, Okay, Ty, I see you boy. Yeah, because honestly, I think physically Ty could whip Gary's ass. Physically, that is. Because there is more methods to fighting than physical. Fighting is not just a physical thing. I mean, if you really understand the art of fighting, you know, Bruce Lee and Enter, um, and Enter the Dragon, the art of fighting without fighting. So, yeah, he probably can beat Gary's ass, but Gary could probably fuck him up in other ways. So, keep that in mind. But, um, he pretty much like, yo, I just saw you here, and I decided just to sit down and talk to you, and also apologize for how I acted the last time you were at my house. And he's like, and he's like, you know, and he's saying that, look, <laughs> okay, you know, the last, he's like, look, I'm already going through a bad day, and the last thing I need is for you to make it worse coming up in here with some bullshit. And he's like, no, it's no bullshit. I really did just want to apologize to you. And he's like, okay, fine, you know, but, you know, it's all good because, you know, I know about guys like you. And Gary's like, guys like me? Whatever do you mean? And all of a sudden, we're seeing this sociopath thing come out. And we're starting, we see it throughout this whole conversation. And he's, and, and like, uh, Ty was like, you know, the controlling and possessive type. You know, the jealous, insecure. And he's like, oh, I'm not that at all. That's definitely not me. Not in the slightest. And, and, and like, Ty's like, you sure about that? <laughs> I was like, see, Ty is on to Gary, and I'm so here for this shit. So, I, and, and some ask that Ty, um, Gary has met his match with Ty. You know, this is a person who is somewhat in the same type of, um, somewhat in the same type of, like, mental apparatus. It's just that Ty's not crazy as Gary is, but they both, you know, are, are boss, they both have boss mentalities. So we kind of get that about them. And they pretty much start talking, going back and forth, and, you know, um, Ty was about to leave, and Ty was about to, you know, Ty took, Ty took his drink and was about to leave, but then Gary was like, look, won't you, let's, let's go back to my place and we can chill. So they go back to their place, they start vibing, they having beers, and, you know, he um, asks, you know, um, Gary what he does, he lets him know that he's a math professor at a college, so he's like, oh, you know, for, you know, the adult idiots, huh? And he's, like, kind of laughing at that. But then we, and then, like, um, he asks his, um, Ty about being a musician. And he lets him know that, look, you know, music has been my passion. You know, I grew up, you know, singing, like, with church groups and stuff like that. But then I, I suddenly turned to R&B and, you know, I've just been working and honing my craft. And he, he pretty much says that, look, music is not... A, a, a easy thing to do and me being a singer myself I can definitely agree I mean studying music is just as hard as studying biology or chemistry I mean it can really get you frustrated at times but at the end of the day the passion is worth it <laughs> it's worth the frustration and you know he pretty much says that like yeah I, I'm, I'm passionate about my craft and I keep working at it and I keep striving at it to make to, to, to make me better I mean practice makes perfect you know you live and you learn. So he, so all of a sudden, Gary's like, hmm, maybe you can teach me, maybe you can teach me a little thing about music. And then, all of a sudden, Ty's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gary's like, okay, um, I'll be right back. So, we see Gary's been gone for quite some time, and Ty's like, yo, I got stuff to do, so, so I'm about to roll out. And he's like, I'll be right there. Next thing you know, we see Gary come out in full Monty Adonis realness. And I'm like, damn, I haven't seen so much chocolate since Hershey Park, I damn. Woo! <laughs> I was like, woo, okay. We didn't see that coming. Like, what in that conversation gave you the indication that he wanted to get butt naked and wanted to get freaky? So, but it just goes to show you how crazy you know, Gary really is. Because earlier in the conversation, he was saying that, you know, I was lucky to run into you to apologize. But then Ty was like, you could have just talked to Logan. Logan know where to find me. And he's like, oh, really? 
you know, you mean at the coffee shop? He's like, no, we ran into each other twice, and I took him to my studio. We kind of, you know, you know, did some stuff there, whatever. We kind of, like, tied some loose ends. And he pretty much apologized to you and everything and said that you weren't like the person that I thought you were. He's like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know that, but I'm glad I'm able to apologize to you now. And you can just look at, at Gary's face that, yeah, your face is saying that? You know, but we can see right through all of that melanin that your blood is boiling and you are getting mad as shit. But this scene, when he comes out butt-ass naked, I'm like, damn, we didn't see that coming. And neither did Ty, because as soon as Ty looked, so all of a sudden, but this scene had me rolling because he not only was giving sexy Adonis, you know, King David by Michelangelo, but then he was also kind of giving Merlin Monroe, it's delicious. Some, some, something's got to give to you. It's like, sorry if I kept you waiting for so long. And all of a sudden, Ty looked up and was like, I mean, he didn't even get no invitation. He even wanted it. I mean, normally, when a guy see a, see like a sexy brother, like Gary standing in front of them, they'll get an invitation like, <laughs> okay. We didn't get none of that with Ty. We just had Ty like. And then he starts working his way over like, uh, you know, why don't you stay and relieve some stress? And then begins to try to kiss Ty and Ty's like, yo! He's like, oh yeah. I remember I said no kissing, but fuck all that. And he's like, yo, bro, get up off me. And they pretty much kind of rustle and touch. And he's like, and then Gary's like, well, come on, man. It's not like we haven't done it before. Pause. Didn't Ty just say the same shit to Logan in the last episode? Com commonality right then and there. They both are dominance. So, and he was like, and then Ty was like, yo, that was a threesome, bruh. You're not even my type. He's like, then why the fuck you still here then? Get the fuck out then. Leave. And Ty's like, yo, huh, I'm going to keep this between me and you because it's obvious you and Logan, you and Logan like keeping secrets from each other anyway. And Gary was like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? He's like, hey, if I told you it wouldn't be a secret, and I don't kiss and tell. Bumped his ass and walked up out of there. I'm like, you better do that shit, Ty. Let him know I ain't here for your bullshit. And then we see Gary fuming, but I'm saying, Logan, you in danger, baby. You got to come home to some shit. Because already in Gary's mind, once he told him that, that Ty and Logan ran into each other a second time, and that he's been at, um, and that he went to Ty's studio, we can already see that Gary's probably already drawn to the conclusion that they had sex. Which is probably why he tried to push up on Ty to see if he can get one up. But Ty completely rejected him. So now, that jealous streak and that control streak and that, you know, danger streak is now about to come, is about, is now about to come full force. And we're going to see what's going to go down once Logan gets back home. So that's my review, y'all. Um, if this long, I, I apologize, but this was a good episode, y'all. I was so here for it. But... Um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Again, if I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd like to hear from you guys. And, um, you know, like this video, comment on this video, share this video. And I will be back with the next episode of Triangle, The Secret Storm. So until then, everybody, take care.